I'm here with Johan Lugerand. He is the CEO, as you say, of EasyJet. Good morning. Good morning. So I spent my evening last night uh, dealing down in Westminster with the Brexit story. Anna's there this morning. Um, nobody can quite figure out what is going on. You are a CEO of a major European carrier, a UK carrier with bases all over the place. What does this uncertainty mean to you? How are you dealing with it? Well, first of all, let me say that we have been preparing for years actually for any scenario you know it was two years ago since we 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 launched and said we were going to start the european aoc so we could fly in in any circumstances and actually right now we are operating almost like if a no deal would have happened so we have prepared ourselves for, for that but of course we also said from from day one of the referendum that you know we want certainty you know, certainty is important for the local economy, certainty is important for our customers, whether that is companies or, or, or consumers. And clearly that is something that we, we are still looking after. We now get certain for what's going to happen for the next couple of days and the next few days. But beyond that, I think that there is still, you know, element of uncertainty. So, but just to reiterate that, we will keep flying as normal. So how does that actually manifest itself? I, you talk about that you, you want certainty. At the moment, as you've already indicated, we don't have that. And it, and it is possible that we won't have certainty for a very, very long time. I, the only certainty at the moment is that we are going to see political turbulence. So how, uh, kind of from an from a EasyJet point of view, how are you actually dealing with that? Well, I think that there's a number of things, you know, if you're looking at the overall demand environment. We can see in some markets where you have a combination of a softening in local economies, Germany as an example, uh, UK as an example as well, that we can see there's been a tougher year from a demand point of view when it comes to our yield environment. It's not to say that people are not flying, they're not traveling. We have a record number of customers flying with us for, for the summer as an example, but the external environment is very different from what it was last year. So that certainly leads to a hesitation which has also led to then a later booking pattern in some of the markets. But we have worked very much on focusing on, on late yield initiatives and we've also been working on a number of other initiatives to mitigate that. But of course, you know, everybody would like to have certainty when it comes to their outlooks and the, the jobs and, and what sure. their economy is going to be. Is, is the pound a factor in all of this? Um, it, it has certainly been under pressure. It's been under considerable pressure. How does that affect the, the, sort of the demand, particularly for the UK, when it comes to going elsewhere? Yeah, so the, the, the pound and the forex exchange rates has you know, a couple of effects. One is that the effect that it has on us in terms of the, the cost that we have and how that affects our pricing. And that's not an imminent issue because we are well hedged you know, this year and also the next year when it comes to that. But of course, you, you know, UK passive would have seen that it's gone, uh, been more, slightly more expensive to be out in some of the Euro destinations as an example. But overall, some of that is also compensated by a you know, very attractive you know, market when it comes to the prices that airlines are offering also out there. I want to come so. on to the prices in just a moment. Um, do you, is the European economy slowing down? Is that your feeling right now? I think uh, there's evidence of that as well when you're looking at Germany as an example, Italy as an example, um, and also some of the latest figures I've seen also when it comes to the UK, the, the output from the UK as well. And uh, I think that plays a role in that. But it's difficult to say what in this is actually, you know, effects out of you know, a fear for a, you know, any Brexit uh, uh, scenario that is out there or just a general slowdown that is a result also about trade wars that goes on between China and the U.S. as an example. So it's a whole bag of things that affects the overall impact. I you, think. you talked about lower prices earlier on. One of the factors that is increasingly being spoken of within the aviation sector is the impact of the carbon footprint and people flying less. Particularly when it comes to low-cost carriers, there is, there is a story that is increasingly being heard. That is, the, the, the low-cost sector is encouraging people to fly, not because it's necessary, but because it's cheap. They're basically offering so cheap flights that people are going, you know what, I'm just going to fly. How do you deal with that long term? Do we have to have minimum pricing? Do we have to have kind of regulatory changes to deal with that? Prices are very low and people will fly. Is that the right way around? I completely disagree with that view, that this should be the problem of you know, low-cost airlines, as an example. So that would then mean that it was much better before when the flying was for privileged people, when the flying was you know, for people who really could afford it and not for 
everyone uh, to have the opportunity to go and see family and friends and to go on holidays and, and do business when it was better, when there were fewer options out there. I completely disagree with that whole sentiment. But what you got to think about is also that when it comes to the carbon footprint, the low cost carriers with efficient models, high frequencies, modern uh, fleets, as an example, has a lower footprint, carbon footprint, compared to some of uh, the legacy carriers out there. So I think people will more choose very carefully about what carrier are they going to fly with when they decide to fly. But we completely understand that people want to choose different means of transportation. And there's no doubt that you know, in the mid-term to longer term, the aviation needs to reinvent itself. And that's why we work a lot, for instance, with um, electricity and hybrid solutions. But biofuels are also examples of things that will continue to have a growing importance when it comes to this.